And here he is, Stephen Jones. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How you doing? Oh, we're doing great. Uh, thanks for joining us. Happy Football Friday. And uh, we're looking forward to this game against the Lions. They, they look a little bit better than they have over the last couple of years. Like, they're running the ball well, and they've played some close games against uh, some good teams. So what kind of a contest are you expecting, sir? Well, first of all, I'll start with Dan Campbell. He's a guy who we had around here for years and have nothing but the utmost respect for him. He's highly, highly, highly competitive uh, uh been a, I think going to be a great coach in our league and uh, as you said he's lost some tough ones going back to last year but uh, he'll have his team ready to go and uh, you know they're playing as you mentioned playing some good football they're running it well uh, Jared Goff's doing some good things for him and uh, they're going to be a, uh, if, if you think you can look past them you got another thing coming they've got a uh, they've got a team that uh, that the air is up and uh you know, going to be a big challenge for us. So are you looking at their run game as the biggest challenge? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, they've obviously been successful running it. And, you know, if you were going to point, you know, to anything on the defensive side of the ball for us, you know, at times, uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, had some challenges uh, stopping the run against, uh, you know, at times. But at times we've, we've done well against it. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's certainly something that we've got to, uh, stop. I mean, that's always used the line one of any defense is uh, stop the run first and then uh, see where it takes us. But uh, uh, certainly that's going to uh, be a challenge for us and uh, a box that if uh, we're going to win this football game, we're going to need to check. It's uh, certainly uh, limit uh, their running game if we can. And when it comes to the run defense, Stephen, does it feel like all things that are like correctable items? Uh, and at what point in the season do you feel like okay, maybe something's not correctable, and we need to go, we need to go do something ourselves to to fix the problem? Yeah, I think it's uh, certain, certainly something we'll continue uh, to improve upon. I thought we did a, a decent job against against Philadelphia. There were times we were. Uh, you know they had their, uh, you know they had some nice runs, but uh, you know I, I think we can. I think one of the things, uh, you know, even uh, Dan pointed out that resonates is sometimes our guys are so hungry to get to that passer. Sometimes the, uh, you know, our gap integrity and things of that nature get compromised, and certainly something that Dan continues to work on with our defense, and uh, certainly uh, something I think that we, uh, you know, can do. Uh, you know, from within, and will continue to improve upon as the as the season moves forward. Stephen, after the Tampa game, there were so many questions about the team, the offensive line. I know I had a lot of questions about that. This group for you seems like they've done an outstanding job with 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 Cooper Rush playing quarterback, and now with Dak coming back. You have to be pleased about what you've seen from the five, six guys who've been playing with you uh, through this uh, through the first part of this season. Absolutely, as you said, it was a you know we had a tough first outing, but uh, you know it's a long season, and I, I do think our guys have gotten better. I know everybody uses the word continuity when it comes to a team's offensive line in our league, but with the injuries that are you know that come with playing the game, come with playing our game week in and week out. Very few teams have the luxury of having, you know, five guy having the continuity with five guys. So you have to be able to plug and play and move guys around. And certainly versatility helps when you're an offensive lineman that has uh, has versatility. And uh, but I do think our guys uh, uh, keep keep improving as a group. I think our running game is going to keep improving. Obviously, uh, uh, Kellen and Coach McCarthy are committed to running the football. That's a good formula for us. Uh, you know, we had a tough second quarter last week where we uh, turned the ball over, and uh, certainly we've, uh, we've got to stay away from that if we want to win football games. We gave them three short fields in the second quarter, got behind 20 points, and, uh, you know, that's a, not a good recipe for winning. But uh, I do think this offensive line uh, continues to improve, and uh, I think they'll continue to improve as we move forward. We've got some good depth that was, uh, you know, certainly disappointing to lose. Uh, well, let's go there to practice this week. Uh, but as we know, he wasn't he wasn't dressing, and hopefully, we do have uh, big time help coming with one of the best uh, uh, offensive linemen in the NFL, and Tyron Smith. So, uh, I think there's reason to be optimistic about what we can do uh, there uh, in our offensive line play. 
uh, think it's been good, think it can be better, and I uh, think we'll continue to improve. So when you guys made it a three-point game last week, while we were waiting for the Eagles to, to come out with 10 or 12 minutes to go or whatever that was, did you did you feel like it was going to come your way and, and that the comeback had happened at that point? Well, well, when you turn the ball, you know, when you, you get it cut to three and, uh, you know, you have our defense, you feel good about it. But yeah. you got to remember Philadelphia's got a hell of an uh, offensive football team. And uh, certainly Jalen Hurts is playing at a high level. Uh, they had one hell of a drive there to answer uh, there in the fourth quarter. Hats off to them. They were playing there at home and just didn't quite make the plays. We had opportunities to make plays, had them in the right situations, you know, with third downs, and uh, we just never could get them out. And uh, uh, my bet is uh, more times than not we're going to do that, but you got to give Philadelphia credit on that one. Stephen, you know, obviously we got brought us here, the, the the scout and the former LSU man, and, and we've been getting excited talking about Damone Clark, who's in this window where he can come back for you guys and everything. Uh, you know, he's a rookie. Uh, he, he was, what, a fifth-round pick, and but he's he's come back from this injury now, and the way he played in college is is exciting. How much how much of a part of the rotation could he be here, and, and is he going to be able to, to get back for you guys here in his rookie year? Well, that'll evolve. I do think he'll be back. And, uh, you know, obviously he's got a window here uh, to get back. Uh, he's got uh, uh, two more weeks here uh, that we can make a decision on him. And uh, uh, But uh, I think a lot of teams had him as a guy who wouldn't play this year. And I uh, give our medical staff credit. They said he certainly had an opportunity uh, if he, you know, if he uh, progressed uh, as could be, as Mike could be expected. And, you know, he's exceeded all expectations and, you know, I, I think he obviously fell in the draft because of, uh, you know, the injury uh, that they found at the combine. Uh, but he certainly answered the bell every step of the way and a guy that we're really excited about. And I do think uh, he'll be uh, playing for it, uh, us this year. And, you know, in terms of his role and how much that's going to evolve. But, uh, boy, we're, we're fired up about what Damone Clark's going to bring to the table. And I uh, agree with Brian, that LSU Tiger out is going to shine before it's over. Nice. Yeah, we're fired up for him. I'm curious, Stephen, when it comes to these like in real time fourth down decisions, is it just McCarthy kind of himself in that moment, or maybe him and Kellen Moore discussing whether or not they should go for it, or how many people is McCarthy in communication with in those moments when they go to determining those decisions in real time? Well, Mike's the final uh, call there in terms of whether we go for it or not. You know how, who he consults and that type of thing. Uh, you know, Mike can answer that question, but. Uh, you know, my, it's Mike's call, just like it is, uh, you know, since an all-head coach's laps uh, when you decide to do that. And certainly, uh, you know, every time you, you do something like that, it's going to be scrutinized. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, uh, we were in uh, what we call turbo, which is to go fast, uh, which leaves little time to review uh, a spot or that type of thing. And we just felt like that gave us the best opportunity to make the fourth down. And, uh, you know, that's uh, part of the game, but uh, certainly Mike has the final call on that. Steven, uh, Jerry came on this morning and kind of admitted that him and Bob Kraft, those words, he kind of, he owned up to the Bob Kraft, what he said to Bob. Are those, I've never been in those meetings though, of course, you know, I probably never will, but are those meetings a little bit heated in discussions and stuff like that? Do people stand up and speak their mind in those meetings? Absolutely. I mean, it's a, you know, it can be emotional and people feel strongly and are passionate about their teams uh and probably the disappointing thing is that it gets out but once it was out i'm sure jerry uh, you know felt comfortable commenting but it is a shame that you can't go in an executive session and have a you know have meetings amongst just the 32 and you would like to think you could have them and uh you know without it uh you know getting out but uh you know it's about it's not a big deal it's just uh you know people feel compelled and people feel uh, passionate about things, and uh, you know when that happens, you you can have that, you know some exchanges. But you know our family's good friends with the crafts. Uh, as I said, things like that can happen. But uh, uh, understand uh, that's part of it, and I think that's great that the fans get to see that these owners uh, feel passionate enough to have a uh, uh, that type of exchange. So uh, I'm sure it'll uh, you know at the end of the day, those things uh, good things can come from those type of things and uh, feel good about it. It's good to know that that's as friendly as a don't mess with me as you can get, but 
I am curious what what did what did Bob say or, or how did he react to to get that reaction from Jerry? Well, I'm not gonna. That's for Jerry and Bob to talk about. I wasn't involved in it, and they can uh, replay uh, whatever they feel comfortable replaying uh, in terms of uh, what the content was. Stephen, you mentioned about it, the stuff getting out of meetings, and, and I, I do agree with you about that. But do you think there's there's too many leaks in the sporting world today? Well, it's just uh, you know uh, our, our, our blessings are curse. I just think that uh, you know today with all the competition that there is between the social media and the streaming and the traditional media, it's a competitive world out there, and I think that just comes with it. Uh, sometimes it's, it can be disappointing uh, because I think because people are in such a rush to get something out there that sometimes it's not what it used to be in terms of the accuracy uh, of it. But uh, at the same time, you know, it's a great thing that uh, the coverage of our game is so passionate, so avid, uh, you know, so out there. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, a part of what comes with it. You're going to have some disappointments, but uh, – at the same time, the overall good of the coverage of our game, I think overall is good. And, you know, I'm on the phone with some guys here who do a great job uh, of covering our game. You're passionate about it. That's why you do it. And uh, and you do a good job of it. Uh, every now and then you're going to have those times where you either don't agree or you think it's inaccurate or you uh, wish it wouldn't, you know, you, you're surprised something like that would, would get around. But uh, that's part of it. Contender in San Francisco adding running back Christian McCaffrey. Do you guys feel like an arms race might be getting ready to start here? <laughs> well, uh, certainly Christian McCaffrey's a hell of a football player, and San Francisco's got a good football team. So, um, you know, that's uh, uh, you know that's part of the race that you're in. Uh, certainly uh, understand why that move was made and why San Francisco would do that. They're getting a, a, a really uh, great football player in McCaffrey. How hard is it at this time of year to juggle the idea of like maybe we are just one player away? You know that's the the key. I think the biggest thing you have to do is, uh, you know, you just have to see exactly if something, you know, is available that could help us out. That we just gotta, you know, make the decision as an organization uh, with our coaching staff and our personnel staff that it does make us better. And uh, you know, who's to say uh, when you're one player away? I think what you're constantly trying to do is uh, we think we've got a really good football team, and if we find the right personnel uh, move that would make us better, then we should consider it. Is it fair to say you're you're less aggressive than years past? And and what's changed from, you know, the days when you did go out and get a Haley and a, and a Dion and it did push you over the top? I don't think anything's changed. I just think it's uh, looking for the right opportunity to to do that. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, McCaffrey's a good player, but we've got two good backs that we like uh, ourselves. And, you know, if we saw the right situation and we felt like it was the right upgrade and it made us better as a team, uh, we wouldn't be any less aggressive. We did Amari Cooper uh, two or three, uh, three or four years ago. I don't remember. I guess two is actually three years ago or, or four years ago, but we made an aggressive move, gave up a first round pick and really felt like uh, Amari could make a, make us a better football team. So, uh, you know, you don't have to go all the way back to Dion and Charles to say, uh, to see when we've made an aggressive move. We traded, you know, throughout our career, whether it's a Roy Williams, whether it's a Joey Galloway, whether it's an Amari Cooper, uh, we've made aggressive moves. All right, life questions with Stephen Jones here. My wife got on to me for putting leftovers in the fridge this week, uh, but I just left it in the crock pot. I didn't take it out and put it in a, tup- a Tupperware. And I'm curious, is Stephen Jones putting leftovers in the fridge? Are you just uh, you just putting aluminum foil over the pot and putting it in, or are you going to take the time to put it in the Tupperware? I'll probably take the time to put it in either a Ziploc or a Tupperware. Okay, all right, you're a better man than me. Uh, what's the what's the what's the Stephen Jones? Now, I will admit something. Yeah. My wife, my wife's the one usually doing that. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. And, and likewise, likewise, she doesn't really trust me. We've gotten to that place now where she's like, you know what? I'd rather just do it myself, and feel like I uh, I've earned that. But what's what's Stephen Jones's favorite house chore? If he if if wifey says, hey, we got just a house chore weekend, what's the one Stephen Jones like? All right, I'll just knock this out. 
the one she wants me to do mostly that I'm pretty is, is clean out my own damn closet and get rid of some things. <laughs> uh, is it the it's, shoes, Stephen, or is it just the clothes stack? It, it's all the above. It's shirts, it's shorts, it's pants, it's things that she said, if you hadn't worn it in the last month, get rid of it. <laughs> all right. The, Stephen Jones's least favorite house chore is what? I don't, you know, I'm pretty lucky. Karen likes to uh, be the homemaker there. And I wouldn't say there's anything that's beneath me. Uh, pr- I, probably the biggest house chore would be uh, if the dog decides to have an accident in the floor, I, I'm going to run from that one and act like <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> is, is Stephen Jones killing the bug in the house or is somebody else having to do that? Oh, I'll kill the bug. Okay. All right. Very good. Now, uh, how often do you, uh, like, do, are you doing much grocery shopping, Stephen? Like, do you get sent to the store with a list of th- I don't do much grocery shopping. Uh, I'm not trusted to do the grocery shopping. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, I guess that might be, that might be all I have. That might, well, well, actually, when was, the last okay. time, when was the last time Stephen Jones was pushing a lawnmower and cutting the grass? Uh that would have gone all the way back to when I, I probably cut grass when I was in college for uh, when I'd go see my uncle uh, so he could get off work early and take me fishing. <laughs> okay, there you go. I like I'd, that. I'd cut my uncle's grass. Work before you play. There so, you go. 